Hello and welcome to the Hooniverse. Now due to popular demand, I'm going to make a full series of videos which will take an in-depth look at each incarnation of the Doctor. So, in this video I'm going to be looking at the character known as the Second Doctor. This video will feature a look at the character's identity and personality, as well as a brief history or timeline of events, and a look at the friends and foes he's encountered, all to answer the question, who is the Second Doctor? The Second Doctor was the second incarnation of the Doctor. First seen at the end of the Tenth Planet on the 29th of October 1966, he was portrayed by the actor Patrick Troughton from 1966 to 1969. However, the character has reappeared on notable occasions, such as in 1973 in a Free Doctor special, with the first and third incarnations of the Doctor. Then the character reappeared in 1983 in The Five Doctors, and then he reappeared in 1985 in The Two Doctors, alongside The Sixth Doctor. Finally, the second Doctor appeared briefly in Twice Upon a Time in 2017. So what was this incarnation of the Doctor like? The second incarnation was a complete change of pace from his predecessor, whimsical, somewhat buffoonish, yet still witty. He was no longer a grandfather figure, but rather more of a favourite uncle. Indeed, the slow transition of the first incarnation from a reluctant travelling companion to a more kind carer was completed here, as the second incarnation very much enjoyed embroiling himself in the adventure with his friends. He also had a warmer and gentler way about him than his previous incarnation, childish, clever, and always a few steps ahead of his enemies. At times he could be calculating and scheming, who would not only manipulate people for the greater good, but act like a bumbling fool in order to have others underestimate his true abilities. Although he frequently gave the impression that he never knew what he was doing, this was simply an act put on to fool those who would underestimate him. Despite the Doctor's almost childlike recklessness, it was always clear to his allies that a keen, deliberate intellect lurked behind his every action, with the Doctor adopting a grave seriousness when the situation called for it. Even though he could get caught up in events around him, the Doctor knew that his friend's well-being came first and foremost. The second Doctor dressed in a way which was similar to his previous incarnation, though in a far more clustered fashion. His trousers were clownishly large, and his bow tie was often crooked and used to secure his shirt collar. He wore a battered old frock coat, many sizes too large, which added to his clownish demeanour, but demonstrated its usefulness as a secret arsenal of tools, gadgets, food, and seemingly frivolous objects. He carried the TARDIS time vector generator inside a pocket in his inner lining without difficulty. The Doctor often kept a plain handkerchief in the coat's top pocket, and under his frock coat he wore a plain shirt with a blue polka dot bow tie. When in colder environments, the Doctor would wear a cloak or an oversized fur coat. He also expressed a liking for hats, stating that he would like a hat like that when he spotted new headgear. Now the second Doctor travelled through space and time in the same TARDIS all his future incarnations pilot. Only like him, the TARDIS changes and renews itself. However, at this stage in the Doctor's life, no major changes had been made to the TARDIS interior, since his first incarnation, with the console room remaining the same, spare a few small changes. Now the exterior did still look very similar to the first Doctor's TARDIS, though it was slightly smaller and now painted in a slightly lighter blue. Also, on one occasion, the pull to open sign was placed on the wrong side and remained wrong for numerous serials before changes were made to put the mistake right. When the mistake was put right, the keyhole was moved onto the right door and another handle was added to the exterior doors. The St. John ambulance sign was also removed late in the first Doctor's era with this change carrying over to the second Doctor's TARDIS. Now, the second Doctor met many faces and had many great adventures, so here is a brief timeline of the Second Doctor's adventures. This timeline is just a quick overview of the Second Doctor's era, so not all his travels will be featured to avoid spoiling them for anyone who wants to watch them. However, the timeline does feature the companion's exits and circumstances of those exits. So, regenerating when his first incarnation gave into old age and fatigue following his fight with the Cybermen at the South Pole in 1986, this new incarnation was the product of the Doctor's first regeneration. After the regeneration, which he referred to as renewal, was completed. The new Doctor found himself suspected as an imposter by his friend Ben Jackson, this being due to the Doctor failing to inform his companions of the Time Lord's ability to regenerate, while Polly was more ready to believe that he was the same Doctor. Before he had time to recover, the TARDIS landed on Vulcan. The Doctor tried to stop a colony scientist from reactivating three captured Daleks, but failed. These Daleks revealed they were using the colony to make new Daleks and within minutes thousands of Daleks attacked. The Doctor and his companions remained to fight alongside the colonists, with the Doctor destroying his foes by using their power against them. The Doctor, Polly and Ben then left Falcon. Arriving in Scotland after the Battle of Cullendon in 1746, the Doctor, Ben and Polly met young Highlander Jamie McCrimmon. 
After exposing slave trader solicitor Gray, they invited him to come with them in the TARDIS, which he accepted. The new TARDIS team had many more adventures, including an encounter with the Cybermen and the Macra. Following these events, the Doctor and his friends met and defeated the Chameleons at Gatwick Airport on the 20th of July 1966. After realising they had arrived home on the same day they had originally left, Ben and Polly decided to end their travels with the Doctor and remain on Earth in 1966. Then, the TARDIS was stolen by the Daleks, the Doctor and Jamie found a time corridor and were transported back to the 2nd of June 1866, where they found two 19th century human scientists, Edward Waterfield and Theodore Max Tibble, trying to isolate the human factor. Jamie and the Doctor befriended Waterfield's daughter, Victoria. After Waterfield died, and the introduction of the human factor in some Daleks having instigated a civil war on Scaro, the Doctor and Jamie left with Victoria, believing the Daleks had destroyed each other. After adventures where the Doctor, Jamie and Victoria encountered more Cybermen, Ice Warriors and more deadly dangers, the Doctor had a second battle with the Great Intelligence, where the Doctor made the acquaintance of Alastair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart, who would later become known as the Brigadier. After this, the Doctor, Jamie and Victoria defeated a weird creature and Victoria chose to stay with a family in this time rather than continue her travels, despite the fact that Jamie, who had feelings for her, tried to persuade her to stay. The second Doctor and Jamie then encountered Sontarans and the sixth incarnation of the Doctor. And later, the Doctor and Jamie arrive on a space station where the Cybermen attempted to invade. Zoe Harriet, who was on board the ship, helped the Doctor and Jamie defeat the Cybermen. When the Doctor returned to the TARDIS, he found Zoe hiding on board. She wanted to join him and Jamie on their travels, so he decides to give her a taste of what it might be like by using a thought scanner to show her one of his past adventures. Zoe still decides she wants to travel with the Doctor and Jamie and they set off for a new adventure. During these adventures around this time, the second Doctor was time-scooped to his TARDIS in the future, where he reunited with the Brigadier, he also encountered Joe Grant, a future travelling companion, and met his third incarnation. The two Doctors, despite their differences, successfully thwarted Omega's escape. After this, the Doctor said his farewells to his future self and was returned to the rightful place. The second Doctor had a few more adventures with Jamie and Zoe, until the Doctor and his companions landed on a planet where the Warlords planned to use human soldiers as an army to conquer the galaxy, by picking them out of various periods above history, with the War Chief's space-time vessel technology. The Doctor, Jamie and Zoe helped unite the various resistant movements on the planet to fight the Warlords. Unable to return all the kidnapped soldiers to the correct places in time and space, the Doctor called the Time Lords for help, thereby revealing his location to them. The Doctor, Jamie, and Zoe tried to slip away before the Time Lords arrived, but the Time Lords started interfering with the TARDIS operation and demanded the Doctor hand himself over. They had continued their attempts to flee the Time Lords, but were inevitably caught and brought to the Time Lords' home planet, Gallifrey. After the Time Lords dematerialised the Warlord for his crime, they placed the Doctor on trial for violating the non-interference policy of the Time Lords. Jamie and Zoe were taken away from him and had their memories of the time they spent travelling with him removed, save from their first adventure. After showing that his interfering with time actually helped prevent evils such as the Daleks, Quarks, Yeti, Cybermen and Ice Warriors from gaining significant power, his sentence was handed down. He was to be exiled to Earth in the 20th century with a forced regeneration. He was given a choice of new appearance, but rejected all of the choices. At their wit's end, the Time Lord chose his new face for him and sent the protesting Doctor away to begin his exile. So that was the relatively brief history of the Second Doctor. Now you may be wondering what aliens he met and foes he went up against. Well, the Second Doctor met a range of aliens from all parts of space and time, with some of the most notable and memorable being the following. The Daleks. Fish people. Cybermen. Macra. Chameleon. The Great Intelligence. Ice Warriors. Quarks. Dominators. The White Robots. Clockwork Soldiers. Protons, and the Time Lords. The Second Doctor also encountered many figures and groups from history, such as the Scottish Highlanders, Tibetans, and First World War soldiers, to name a few. So as you can see, the Second Doctor fought many foes, made many allies, and had many adventures. The Second Doctor is rather different to his first incarnation. This is the Doctor enjoying the universe, acting the fool, and trying to have fun, but underneath, he is more calculating than we could have ever imagined, and a pressing need and almost sense of duty to stop the evil of the universe. This is the beginnings with the Doctor being a hero, something that his next incarnation truly became. Until then, thanks for watching this video. 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click the like button and comment below with what your favourite Second Doctor moment, story or alien is. And if you want to see more videos made by myself, check out the links on the left and click the subscribe button. Thanks again, and a special thanks to everyone who helped with the colorization of the images used in this video. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.